Hi, Daniel with DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Today's Life Journal Bible reading plans for the 27th of September. And we'll cover Haggai chapter 1 and 2, as well as Psalm 129, and then in the New Testament, Luke chapter 10. So, uh, Haggai chapter 1, the New King James Version, reads the command to build God's house. In the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways, go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may be, that I might take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew and the earth withholds, withholds its fruit. For I called you, I called for a drought on the land and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine and the oil on whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock and on all the labor of your hands, the people's obedience. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him and the people feared the presence of the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke to the Lord's message to the people, I, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. On the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. As I'm pulling up Haggai 2, we go through the Old Testament once in a year's time and the New Testament twice in a year's time. The coming glory of God's house, Haggai 2. In the seventh month, on the 21st of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now? <clears throat> in comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, and once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory. Says the Lord of hosts, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts, the glory of this Latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts, and in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. The people are defiled. On the 24th day of the ninth month in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Now ask the priest concerning the law, saying, If one carries holy meat in the fold of his garment, when with the edge he touches bread or stew, wine or oil, or any food, Will it become holy? Then the priest answered and said, No. And Haggai said, If one is who is unclean because of a dead body touches any of these, will it be unclean? So the priest answered and said, It shall be unclean. Then Haggai answered and said, So is this people, and so is this nation before me, says the Lord, and so is every work of their hands. And 
what they offer there is unclean. Promise blessing. Now carefully consider from this day forward, from before stone was laid upon stone in the temple of the Lord, since those days when one came to a heap of 20 FFs, there were but 10. When one came to the wine vat to draw out 50 baths from the press, there were but 20. I struck you with blight and mildew and hail and all the labors of your hands, yet you did not turn to me, says the Lord. Consider now from this day forward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Consider it. Is, is the seed still in the barn, as yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yielded fruit? But from this day I will bless you. Zerubbabel chosen as a signet. And again, the word of the Lord came to Haggai on the 24th day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake heaven and earth. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the Gentile kingdoms. I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. The horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Sheltiel, says the Lord, and I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, says the Lord of hosts. So now it's time for Psalm 129. As I'm pulling that up, we've got hundreds of spiritual messages at DanielParsonsMinistry.com. And my wife, Patricia, is the gourmet chef. She's got hundreds of delicious vegan recipes. Just click the Healthy Living tab at DanielParsonsMinistry.com. We enjoy interacting with you, so please leave a comment on your favorites. Thank you. Psalm 129, Song of Victory Over Zion's Enemies, a Song of Ascents. Many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. Let Israel now say, many a time they have afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. The flowers plowed on my back. They made their furrows long. The Lord is righteous. He has cut in pieces the cords of the wicked. Let all those who hate Zion be put to shame and turned back. Let them be as the grass on the housetops, which withers before it grows up, with which the reaper does not fill his hand, nor he who binds sheaves his arms. Neither let those who pass by them say, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Now it's time for the New Testament scripture of this day, which will be Luke chapter 10. As I get this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just do a search on YouTube for Daniel Parsons Ministry. Thank you. Luke 10, the 70 sent out. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way, behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you and remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you, but whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it would be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe to the impenitent cities. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida, for the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. He who hears you hears me. He who rejects, he who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 70 return with joy. Then the 70 return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. 
And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this as the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Jesus rejoices in the spirit. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babies. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it, and to hear what you hear and have not heard of it. The parable of the Good Samaritan. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to them, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an end, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Mary and Martha worshipped and served. Now it happened as he went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And when she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. But Martha was distracted from much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do not you care that my sister um, has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. So that's the end of today's Bible reading. God bless you until we're together again. Bye for now.